Today we're gonna make an old-fashioned fruit cake. It's my grandmother's recipe for a moist, spiced fruit cake that is just completely packed full of nuts and dried fruits. And you don't taste all the alcohol, it's not overwhelming. It's just this really mellow, warm, spiced cake that is soft and a little bit sticky. And it's just a really decadent dessert. So this recipe is a long process. I think I started it in July. So as always, I'm gonna drop down below the chapters of the kind of, you know, key points throughout the video. So you can see making the cake and then the several times that I soak it um, and then trying it, obviously. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. All right, let's get into it. Fruit cake. Lots of things going on. I promise it's not as like stressful as it seems. Um, so first we're gonna get, you know, just take care of all the dry ingredients. So in here I've got some chopped pecans. You could toast them if you want. Uh, the recipe is untoasted. So we're gonna go ahead and put our candied cherries in there. You could use red or green or a mix of both, up to you. And then we're gonna put dried pineapple and then dried golden raisins. And that, that's all the mix-ins. So just give them a toss, just, just cause. Okay. Briefly question your pan choice and then move on. Okay. Next, we are going to set that aside. I mean, we are gonna mix our dry ingredients. So I've got, this is AP flour, kosher salt. This is cinnamon and a raisin that fell in there. Speaking powder and nutmeg. Give those a little whisk just to incorporate, distribute all of the leavening and all of that. Spices, no one wants a patch of nutmeg. Ooh. Okay, and now we are gonna take this dry and we're gonna put it on top of our mixed nut fruit situation. Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit of time because I'm a little stressed that I'm gonna coat myself with the flour mixture and I'm not into that today. Now some recipes call for coating the fruit with some of the flour. This one, you know, is just like dump it all in. So we're rolling with it. Cause Nana said it's awesome. All right, dries are done. See, much less cluttered, super great. Feeling less stressed already. <laughs> Except about my pan choice, still stressed about my pan choice. All right, I am just popping in here with a quick spoiler alert that the crown bunt pan was a disaster. I mean, epically. So, though I did my utmost to save it. Um, so I am going to remake it, but um, we are gonna line a different pan, okay? Um, okay, so this is a standard tube pan with a removable tube. There's nothing fancy about it. This is what I bake my angel cake, food cakes in. Ain't nothing special here. But we are, it's easier to get the fruit cake out. So we are gonna line the bottom, which is a little tricky because obviously there's a tube. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the tube bit out and we're gonna trace the bottom of that. So just get yourself a Sharpie, a pen, whatever you, whatever you have, um, and then just kind of trace this bit. I'm gonna stick my Sharpie down the bottom and I'm going to kind of trace around the inner side of that circle. Yes, this is, this is high tech stuff that's happening. So go ahead and now we're gonna cut this out. I know, um, it's a little bit more fancy than what we've done before, but it is still just basic arts and crafts and we've totally got this. So go ahead and just snip, snip, snip. Don't forget to do it inside the circle because Sharpie is disgusting and also toxic. So, you know, same rules apply here. The idea here with the two pan as opposed to a more ornate situation, because she was just so sticky and so moist, right? Which is exactly what we want in a fruit cake. So if it, she had come out of the pan, I guess that would have been a bad thing. So, you know, we can just take comfort in that. I did also try it and it's phenomenal. So we can also take comfort in that, my friends. So go ahead and just kind of fold it in half um, it doesn't have to be exact, like you don't, you know, this isn't, you're, it's gonna be fine. And then just cut right outside of that center circle. So right outside of your little Sharpie drawing. 
and make sure you get all of your Sharpie. It is a pain, you know, this extra step, right? But it is, it is going to be worth it when our cake comes out uh, without any stress. Because I can tell you from the last time, um, when your pan is just clinging for dear life onto your cake batter, it's just so sad, okay? So just line your tube pan. Look at that. She cool, right? All right, now we've done that. And we are gonna just prepare as usual. So we're just gonna spray it, okay? We're just gonna give it, for what it's worth, a good spray in there. Spray the tube, my friends. Yes, the tube, okay? We are still gonna, you know, have to kind of but we're just trying to do our best, okay? So go ahead and pop in your perfectly lined bottom, and now you've got yourself a sprayed tube pan with a removable bottom, which is going to make it so much easier to remove. Like, it's just gonna be, guys, just trust me, okay? So back to our regularly scheduled programming. We're gonna mix and get her in the oven. I'm gonna catch right back up with you. Let's start mixing. So we've got in our bowl here of our stand mixer, we have room temperature butter. It is actually room temperature because my room temperature is actually like really hot. And, um, cause it's August. <laughs> yeah. And we're gonna put our sugar in. Yep. Obviously we're making this in August because you gotta soak it, it's gotta sit, it's gotta absorb all those flavors, it's gotta like do its booziness, and it's gotta get, you know, it's gotta get its booze on. So, you know, we gotta make it ahead of time. Grab yourself your stand mixer. You could, of course, do this by hand, as I'm sure they did back in the day. We don't live then, so thank God. I'll put in the paddle attachment, turn her on. It's a lot of sugar peeps, okay? So start it slow and then increase. All right, go ahead and give it a scrape down. It's not gonna take very long because, again, my butter was actually room temperature, um, and so it's really, you know, it doesn't need much, doesn't take much doing. We are looking for it to be a little like lighter. Um, it's a lot of sugar, so it's going to more look, resemble sand, rather like wet sand, rather than kind of a light and fluffy texture that you'd expect. But just give it a minute, let her do her thing. Our butter is light and fluffy, and we are going to start adding our eggs. So there's six of them, so we're gonna add about one at a time and beat nicely in between each one. An ample beating is going to create a little lightness in your cake, add some you know, air pockets. Some of the things that people complain about with fruit cakes is that they are dense and just unpleasant. Well, beating your eggs nicely and making sure your sugar is properly creamed will help that. And then we're gonna add our brandy, because there's brandy inside and brandy soaking. So, you know, <laughs> she boozing. It's Christmas. That's it. It's actually one of the easier fruit cake recipes that I've had. Some of the other ones are a little bit more cumbersome. All right, and now we're gonna take all of our nuts and we're in flour and all of that dry, good stuff and we're gonna put that in here. Still having questions about our pan, but you know. And we're just gonna fold this in. I mean, the majority of the cake is fruit, dried fruits and nuts, because that's, I mean, that's kind of the whole shtick, right? It's the whole thing behind our fruit cake is that it's just a little bit of cake between layers of dried fruit and nuts. Now you could change the fruit and nuts that you put in here. It's totally up to you. Just kind of keep the, the same amount if you want the same results. Uh, oh my gosh, okay. She hefty. So we've got our newly floured and sprayed pan. We've got our batter that is just mostly fruit and nuts. <laughs> and we're gonna get this in our pan. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of like pour and turn. Mm -hmm. Pour and turn. All right, I'm gonna spread this out with the back of the spoon. Just kind of try and kind of get it down into all of the cracks. And make sure that it kind of fills the pan. All right, here she is. 
Now, this recipe is half of my grandmother's um, and half of the one that's in the, the book. Um, allegedly, a full recipe would fill a 10 inch tube pan, which is this. So I'm not totally convinced, but maybe if we trust Pillsbury, or it'll make four one pound coffee cans, whatever <laughs> those are, um, or it will make two nine inch cakes. So I don't know if we believe that, but you know, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've got our oven preheated to 275 degree regs, um, cause it's like low and slow is the name of the game here. And then we are going to bake it with a water bath underneath. It's not gonna be in the water bath. It's going to be on the shelf above said water bath. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pan, fill it with hot water and meet you back here. So I've obviously got a big roasting pan. You can use um, any sort of baking dish that you want. You just kind of want a little bit of water in the pan that's already hot, that's gonna kind of steam the oven. It's kind of like a Christmas pudding in a way, um, but we're not gonna cover it. So it's going to, it's just to keep it moist throughout baking. Now, a uh, book says that half the recipe, if you will, will bake in about two hours. The one that died, she baked in just shy of two hours. I think it's the, the extra tube um, and the fact that it's a half. Um, she baked in like two, in an hour and a half, I'd say. So we're gonna, we're gonna test it the same way with a cake tester that comes out clean. We're still, all the same cake rules apply here. Um, there's just an epic amount of fruit to cake ratio. So I'm gonna pop her in, um, I'm gonna set about an hour timer and then kind of just check her from there. Uh, she won't be done in an hour. Uh, and then I'm gonna pop this in the bottom and we'll be, we'll be off. All right, so the cake is out. It baked about three hours at 275. I did about halfway through turn up to convection because I got tired of waiting and I was a bit kind of impatient. So I would suggest baking it at convection. It did take a lot longer in this kind of pan um, just because it's like a little it's thicker than like the walls of the other bun pan. Unfortunately, also a sad thing happened because you know, why not? But because of the removable pan bottom, some of the batter kind of leaked out. I thought about it when I was putting it in there. I'm like, this is kind of a loose batter. I wonder if it's gonna go out the bottom. It did. Um, and so it dripped down into the, the water bath, which is nice because then it didn't burn on the bottom of my oven, which really would have been a real big bummer. So I did um, just, it's cooled about, um, it's cooled a couple hours actually, but like after about five minutes, I essentially, um, cut it because it just became basically like caramel down there and even at that point so I would do it immediately after it comes out and just hold it with a towel if, you, if that happens to you. Um, they do make two pans that do not have a removable bottom so obviously that would be better. Um, you can still do the same uh, method for lining the bottom you just will need to use the whole cake pan as opposed to just taking out the bottom insert. Um, all right, so here she is, and we're ready to unmold her and booze it up. So go ahead, oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, I don't know why this didn't come out of the other pan. <laughs> it's like glue. So I am cutting around the edge, obviously. Um, it is, you know, it's tricky, but you wanna cut all the way down to the bottom. Obviously don't want to do this with your favorite knife because you are going to ruin it. Um, if you have a nonstick, then this will be easier, but you should use like an offset or something so you don't hurt your nonstick. I am pretty excited at this moment that it's a removable bottom because I think that it's going to be, you know, a sticky situation. Mm, I'm going to have to cut the bottom again. Yeah. So you can see that it's not, uh, it does not want to free itself. So I just have to, it not coming out is not optional. So we will get this cake out of this pan. Okay, I think our, I think the culprit is the, the leaky parts down there. So we're just gonna have to do a little bit of surgery. This cake pan is great for angel food cakes, but like maybe not in here. Learn something new every day. Okay, I think we might have, yes, okay. 
uh, we've identified the problem, children. Aha, we did it. Oh, wow, can't wait to clean that. Can't wait. Wow, she is a monster in like the best way. I mean that. Okay, now because we've lined the bottom, that part should be considerably easier than what we just had to endure. The reason it didn't come out when we had it upside down is because I did not cut around the center, so that stuck to it like glue. So we are just gonna have to just do the same thing around the center. I feel like I've not done a good job of selling, selling the fruitcake experience. It's fine, okay. So this should come off a whole lot easier. I am a little stressed about my transfer, but here we are. And boom, oh, man, thank God, am I right? Look at our little parchment down there doing its job. Man. Oh, I totally forgot to tell you guys. Um, 30 minutes before I took her out, after the crumb had started to set, so you'll notice when it's baking that there is a kind of an unset crumb, which is really soft. Um, and you know, you push on it and it looks like it's gonna collapse on itself, right? That's not when you wanna do this. But when it's quite kind of set already, um, I brushed a bit of honey that I warmed up on the top of the cake. Um, it's in the OG recipe, so I was like, let's do this thing. And um, it made like a really pretty crust on the top, so highly suggest. Uh, but anyways, we've got quite a, a lovely cake here. Um, I don't see how double would have fit in this pan, but you know, who am I to judge? We're gonna sit, soak her and we're gonna wrap her up and that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go get all the accoutrements. Wow, that is a heavy cake. Okay. Um, and then we'll do it. All right, so what I've got here. I've got a measuring cup. This is the way, the easiest way that I've found to soak rags for um, soaking fruit cakes of which I've had innumerable experiences here. So this is the best way. So we're just gonna measure about three quarters of a cup. I mean, obviously you can use what you want. Um, if it needs more, then it needs more. Um, so we'll just kinda eyeball that, you know, booze. Okay, so I've got myself a towel. So this is a thicker tea towel that I have, um, a kitchen towel. And so I have kind of pre-soaked it. It is not wet at all, but it is damp. So I pre-soaked it or just squeeze, put a little water on it, uh, squeezed it out um, so it is damp because otherwise it's going to absorb an epic amount of booze and it's also just, it's a little thicker than others so it's, just trust me, okay? So go ahead, it's still gonna absorb all the brandy. So go ahead and just kinda get that in there, allow it to soak it in, yep. Mm -hmm. Now I've got plastic wrap on my counter. I like to think of this as the booze catcher um, and we are going to use that to make sure that we don't just like flip over a boozy towel onto our, I mean, it's gonna be a mess, okay? So just trust me. So what's nice here is what we've got here is the bottom and then the top is on the bottom here. So we are going to wrap our booze soap towel, totes. We're gonna wrap her in this boozy sitch. You can see how this is kind of messy, yeah. And then we're going to, oh, hold on, try and center it. Okay, and then we're just gonna flip her over. It is a solid cake, okay? So it's not going to, nothing bad's gonna happen from manhandling it like this. Oof. <sighs> the fumes are intense over here, wow. And then we're just gonna like kind of wrap her up like a little present. You know, we're trying to cover every surface, right? Um, if we can get some extra to, to get stuck in the center, that would be perfect. This towel is like a little small, like it's like a weird shape. I don't know, I can't explain these things to you. It's just it's, it's kitchen stuff. All right, I'm like really tempted to just like put this, here. I'm gonna do it, um, yeah. It doesn't say to do this in the recipe, but I don't want to waste this much brandy, so uh, I'm just gonna, there she goes. All right, so there's bruise on my brandy, which you can, may or may not be able to see, and I'm not gonna think about it, and I'm just gonna like pull up the sides and be like, thank you, 
for not being on my counter. Okay. And now we are gonna wrap this thoroughly with plastic wrap, okay? So we're gonna move our booze packet and then wrapper. I'm gonna wash my boozy hands. I promise that the link I put below for the tube pan will be a non-stick, non-removable bottom. Because I see you, I feel you, and you don't wanna be in this same spot that I am in. My grandmother did say to put a slice of apple in there, and I just forgot. Which is nice, because I was just craving apples and peanut butter, and I feel like this just solved it for me. And what a win-win, guys. What a win-win. So I'm just gonna unwrap my booze paper, um, and I'm gonna shove it in this, she didn't say where to put it. And I don't wanna bother Nana incessantly about this cake any more than I already have. So I'm just gonna put it in the center. I feel like that's a good enough spot. I do feel like it should be peeled. So I'm just gonna peel this little section here. I appreciate that not all the moisture from this cake is going to come from brandy. <laughs> so anyways, as we were, I'm gonna pop those in there. I'm gonna cover them up with the little towels and then we are going to proceed. You should also know, fun fact, things I learned from making fruit cakes this year. Um, like an 18th century grandmother. Um, is that the brandy and cake wrapping situation will ruin whatever towel you put on it. So I put a cute little blue napkin because I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute when I take it off. No, it is brown. So just know and be aware of, you know, these, these realities, okay? So I make the mistakes so you don't have to. And that's it, <laughs> which feels false to say, but it's true, it wasn't that hard, okay? It was hard for me, but it won't be hard for you and it'll be worth it, I promise. I know because I've tried the other cake and it was like really tasty. Um, so we are gonna let her sit for a month. Yeah, you heard me right, a month. This is why her cake gets a better name. But um, she's gonna sit for a month, she's gonna absorb all of that brandy essence and um, take on that moisture and then we are gonna do this one more time. You could do this throughout the course of the year, you know, whatever, but like how much booze do you want in the cake? It's up to you. So I'm gonna do it twice, once today, once in a month, and then we're gonna wait a month and then we are going to slice her and see what's up. So it's been just about a month and we are ready to soak Nana's fruitcake. Um, so I've got myself my brandy here and I'm gonna go ahead and pour about a half a cup uh, in here, which this doesn't actually measure, so just, you know give it an eyeball. And then I'm going to unwrap my soaked cake packet. Yes. Now I've got myself, I have the same situation that I had last time, right? Where I've got um, a plastic wrap already on my counter just to make the wrapping easier. Um, it doesn't make the unwrapping any easier, but and just unwrap that behemoth. Oh yeah, we've got our little apples in there. Almost forgot about them. Okay, so we've got, let's just flip this over. It's gonna make our lives easier. Um, on the, the reverse, those are our apples. We can dispense with them. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of unwrap my fruit cake, kind of. Right. Give me my apples. And then I'm gonna re-soak my towel. Yeah. Just do it again. Now Nana would do this two to three times a month, okay? And then she'd do it for several months. So you know. In case, I mean that is that the possibility is there for you as well. So it's really up to what you like, how far in advance you wanna make them. Okay, so you can see I've got my towel all soaked. Nice, takes about the whole thing. So go ahead and just kinda, of, just like we did before, right? So we are going to lay this on there and then we're gonna flip her over carefully, hopefully without 
disturbing the parchment or the plastic, but apparently not. Okay, there she goes. And then we're just gonna kind of pop a, you know, just kind of wrap it around. Try and cover the whole thing, you know. Um, you know, you don't want some that's not beautifully soaked and some that is. So really no secret method to that. And then we're gonna wrap her up, which she's already on her plastic wrap. So no brandy went to waste in case you were concerned. And, you know, just kind of pop it on up and over. And then we're gonna give it one more wrap around. Um, and then we're gonna store it. In another probably three to four weeks, then we'll, we'll open her up and um, it'll be time to try. <laughs> it's a pretty long lead time to it's time to try, isn't it? That's fine. So in about a month, see you then. All right, the time is finally here. It is time to break this bad boy open and see what she's all about. So I've gotten got my scissors here. I'm just gonna slice her open. fruit cake packet. All right. Now I'm going to unwrap her. All right. Make our lives easier. Might as well. Okay. Flip her over. All right. <laughs> the time is here. It's time to try. So let's go ahead and just slice a piece here see what's see what's happening on the inside like a long time coming that's what it feels like see what's up there's the big reveal there she is packed full of nuts and dried fruit wow so many pecans just chilling in that one piece right there um i don't know if i can i mean the moisture is just it looks insane so let's just let's just see so fork and uh, dig in, like mostly nuts. It is super moist. It doesn't actually taste like booze, so it's not like overwhelmingly boozy, which is shocking, quite frankly. It almost just tastes like Christmas. It's like spiced with like a little bit like of the warmth that you get from booze, but not necessarily that hit of alcohol. And then like all the nuts, like that one bite I had had like, it was like mostly pecans, which is wonderful. So you get like the crunch of the pecans and then you get a little extra sweetness from some of the dried fruits. Overall, like just really, just a really delightful fruitcake. It is thick and heavy and rich and you know, you couldn't eat like a whole section but it would be absolutely delightful with just some homemade whipped cream, a uh, scoop of vanilla ice cream, or maybe vanilla bean anglaise, um, something just to kind of pull it all together and really just like bring home and highlight some of those spice notes. Um, she's really, she's, she's really quite good. Go Nana, I see you. <laughs>